so guys, we should be really good at this. I kept telling you if you didn't know how to do something to go back and watch the videos. We shouldn't be this lost. Okay, here we go. Just saying, I'm just a little bit nervous, only because we have a test coming up. So our amplitude is two. So it's reaching up as high as two. So remember that cosecant is one over sine. So to start this out, all we have to do is graph this as y is equal to 2 sine of 2x minus pi. So then we would first of all, our amplitude 2, like we just said, we're graphing sine. Sine looks like this, right? Yeah. So our normal points of a non-shifted function go 0, then what? Pi halves, as you go around the inner circle, then what would we hit next? Pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi's. So what we're going to do is we're literally going to go and we're shifting it. Remember, this 2 does affect the shift. You would set that equal to 0. So 2x minus pi equal to 0, the lower, the lower point, right? 0, guys. And then you would solve. So x is equal to, you'd add pi, divide by 2. So do you see how we're shifting this right pi halves? Right pi halves. So wasn't that taking all of our x values and adding pi halves? Okay, let's do that. So where are our new values? So we're going to go over here and we're going to draw in this new y-axis, and that starts at pi halves. Then we're going over 1, 2, 3, 4, correct? To put in one cycle. That's good enough for now. So then what's this point going to be? We just scrapped that point. What's that going to be? Pi halves plus pi halves is how many pi halves? Two pi halves which simplifies to be pi. Okay, what about this? One plus a half is three halves, right? Three pi halves then, right here. And then this one would be four pi halves, which is two pi's. And then this would be you two plus a half is five halves. Guys, you get a common denominator. So this is five pi halves. Now we're graphing sine. It's Positive 2. And remember, sine starts at the 0. So I'm right here, we're at 0, right? Then at this next point, we're at the max, our amplitude. At this point, we're back to the 0. At this point, we're at the min. And at this point, we're back to 0. So we've drawn in one cycle for sine. And I probably should have drawn that in dotted, but hey, it is, it's okay. Well, uh, we did stretch it out too, so look up to 2, negative 2. This. This is just a shift of pi half, right pi half. I guess I'm confused. Oh, yeah, yeah. The length of a period is, oh, I see what you're saying. Period is 2 pi divided by 2, which is pi. What am I missing? Yeah, my period's too big, right? So how do we fix this? We need to cut it, right? We need to squish it in. Good point. We need to squish it in. Okay. Okay? Me especially. No. Good point. This is actually not ending at 2 pi. Good point. It's actually ending at pi. So we're from 0 to pi, correct? But now it's shifted right pi half. So we just need to fix our x values. So that's a good point. So we're shifting right pi halves and pi halves. There we go. So we're starting at still pi halves, but we're not going to be ending at where we said. So that's not a bad fix. Is anybody confused? Because I did mess that up by not paying close enough attention. So pi halves is the shift. We're still, we are going right pi halves, but just our interval this time, because we should have first looked at our period, which means the physical length of one cycle. So our physical length of one full four tick marks is only over pi. And I just didn't even look at that and said, oh, it's over two pi. Does that make sense? So we should, if we were ending, if it was not shifted, we'd start at zero and end at pi. Does that make sense? So start at zero, ending at pi. 
So let's just put in this point. That's good enough. So 1 plus 1 half is 3 pi half. So that's what we need to fix, 3 pi half. Is everybody comfortable with that? Okay, we'll make sure we practice a few of those on the review day so that we don't mess up. Does that sound like a good deal? So now from here, if we fixed our tick marks, we could go through and figure out the rest of these halfway marks, you know what I mean, and go through. Uh, but then let's draw in our asymptotes. So our sine function cannot be zero, because we can't divide by zero. So isn't this where our function hits zero? How far up or down? Our function's at zero, wherever it crosses the x-axis. So now we will draw in this. So I'm super glad. Amelia pointed that out so that I didn't feel like a failure when I watched the video later. Okay, questions on that? Okay, awesome. Okay, did anybody have any problems? Number 25 is kind of hard on the homework. Anybody? Okay, we're going to go over it together because it's actually pretty easy, but it, it is hard by how they explained it. Okay, so this one was kind of hard. Uh, it says find the values. So this is number 25 on 6 9. It says find the values for B for which the triangle has one solution, two solutions, and no solutions. So, first of all, I just want to draw this in. Now, once again, I really do have to be able to think to explain this to you well. So, please, everybody, focus with me and help me out. So, I'm thinking through this. Because this one did take me even some thought, some deep, some thought. And I'm like, oh, it's actually easy, pretty, pretty easy. So we're drawing in angle A, and that is 36 degrees. And then side A would be across from angle A, so that's 5, right? Let me change colors. That's kind of not very really seeable. So 5. Can't see it very good. And then this is, the, so it says find the values for B. So let's call this side B. So the thing that made this hard was that we learned this last time uh, looking at more like side A. So that's what we're going to do here is we're going to say for side A, when we when we'll make a triangle and when no triangles exist and when two triangles exist. And then we'll go through and um, extend that to side B and how that relates. So last time we learned we had our picture of our triangle with our string, which we did in my other hours, which went way smoother than in here. So I always learn from you guys. So it says find the values for B for which the triangle has one solution. So remember back to one solution. There's a couple of different ways we can have one triangle and only one triangle. So didn't we say if this side A is, um, there's a couple of different ways. Can anyone remember one of them? If side A is, oh, let's draw in the height. I like that idea. Here's my height. Okay, if side A is equal to the height, is that what you said? Okay, that's one of them. So A equals height. Isn't that going to make one? Can we draw this in right there? One triangle, okay? What about A with B? Longer than B? Same as B, that's another one. So if A equals B, we'll have one triangle, right? It's going to be isosceles. If that and that are the same length, won't it be one isosceles triangle? Makes sense? And what about if A is larger than B? Isn't that okay as well? If it's longer, doesn't it swoop around and only make that exact triangle out here? Right? And then it will pass it and never cross again. Okay, awesome. Let's talk about two solutions. When are we going to have two solutions? When, when what? When you say it's, let's be specific. When A is greater than the height, but A is less than B. Sweet. That is true, right? Look, if it's less than B, but larger than the height, think about it. It's going to swing like this, right? Below the height. Look, it's going to cross there and there, right? So then that makes one obtuse angle B and one acute angle B, right? So that's when we have two, uh, two solutions. And then when we have no solution is if A is shorter than H and shorter than B, right? Then it just looks like this and can never touch. Swing it around. So if A is less than H and A is less than B. So now because of the instructions, that is absolutely true. It says find the values for B. So I want to remind you of something. If we have this, if we focus in on this right triangle here. This is my height, this is B. Isn't it true to say if we go to 36 degrees, the sine of 36 degrees equals H over B? Isn't that true? That's a true statement, right? Let's solve for, uh, let's solve for H. So, let's see. Let's solve for H. So what would we do here? When we multiply both sides by B, you guys? Yep, so H equals B sine of 36. Is anybody confused? 
Okay, isn't that always true? Our height is b sine of 36. So because they want us to relate this to b, anytime we have height, we're going to put in our b sine of 36, which it's equal to. Because then it's in terms of b, not height. Does that make sense a little bit? So that's what our book's doing. Are you confused over there? Okay. So a equals height. So our a equals, what is our height? B sine of 36. Now solve for B. Because it wants it for B. Does that make sense? So what would we do to get B alone? Divide by sine of 36. So let's divide both sides by sine of 36. And then we have A equals, sorry, B. Sorry, I'm going to go over here. B equals, I hate how I don't have very much room. A over sine of 36. Well, what is side A? What length? 5. So we're going to write 5 over sine of 36. So that is true for one solution. Let's move on. If A equals B, we just said B is. Oh, uh, wait. Okay, I'm waiting. Yeah, but they're leaving it like this. Like, you could actually get the decimal answer, but they're leaving it. Your book, if you were looking in the back of the answer, that's where they're coming up with that answer. So that's a pretty answer. So also, if, so if, what what is A? Five, right? Guys, so we have 5 equals B. They want their answers with B, not A. You get what I'm doing? Yeah. I'm replacing anything that doesn't have a B with what it's equal to. So I wrote for this piece, we just did that. Now we did that. If 5 equals B. And if 5 is greater than B. So let's write that all pretty style. So isn't it true? So if 5 is greater than B or B equals 5, couldn't we write our answer for one solution as B is less than or equal to, I'm just going to put this into one answer just to make it pretty so I don't have it split apart, less than, B is less than or equal to 5, right? Or if B equals that, that's when we have one solution. Do you see how I just use algebra and put in what we know? Okay, let's go to two solutions. We want it in terms of B, our answer in terms of B. So let's replace everything we know. A is 5, right? Guys, 5 is greater than, what's my height? Because we need it in terms of B. B sine of 36. Does everybody see how I rewrote that? Now solve for B. So we divide by sine of 36. So B will be less than that. And let's go over here. 5 is less than B. So let's put that into one answer here because they want it in terms of B. So B, we're going to have two solutions. If B is less than that, right? Look at it. It eats the bigger thing, right? So it still needs to eat it. So 5 over sine of 36. But is greater than, B is still greater than 5. So that would be our answer for two solution in terms of B. So do you see how they're just taking how we write it with A, and they're putting it in terms of B instead. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, next one. We'll have no solution if A is less than the height. We need it in terms of B. So 5 is less than B sine of 36. And then also 5 is less than B. So solve for B. So 5 is less than, um, sorry, 5 over sine of 36 is less than B, right? And also, 5 is less than B. So look, we have B is less than 5 and, sorry, B is greater than, sorry, I'm reading this backwards. 5 over sine 36 is less than B. Or we could say B is greater than that. Does that make sense, everybody? And then also, 5 is less than B or B is greater than that. So let's see if we really need to put both. So it says B is greater than 5 and B is greater than that. Well, calculate that decimal. 5 divided by sine of 36. You get like 8 point something, right? So do we, if it's greater than 5 and greater than that, don't we just need to put greater than that since 8 is larger? You get what I'm saying? So all we need to list is this one because if it's larger than 8 point something, it's obviously larger than 5. So that's an unnecessary thing to put. Does that make sense? So it's going to have no solution if B is larger than 5 over sine of 36. Mr. Roberts students came and asked me for help on that one, and then I'm like, well, that one took a little bit of thought just because we really talked about it more in terms of A. Does that make sense? So that's kind of why that one's a little tricky. 
Okay, awesome. I'm glad we were able to go over that. Okay, so just a reminder of what we learned last time. So recall that when solving for non-right triangles, we will use a lot of signs if you're given a couple different things. So if you're given an angle and two sides, as long as one of the sides is across from the given angle, we can use the law of signs, right? Now look, the side across from the given angle is larger than the other given side, so this is the only triangle. We're good. Let's move on and solve this one. So we would set up the law of signs, so we would say, now I like to start what I'm solving for, so aren't I solving for this angle? So we would say sine of x over the side across from it, right? Over 15 equals sine of 110 over 20. Now it's just algebra to get x alone. So what do we multiply both sides by 15? Sine of x equals 15 sine of 110 divided by 20. Now what do we do to get x alone since it's trapped in sine? Sine inverse. So we have x is equal to sine inverse of all that stuff. Go, type. You guys, we go way slower in this class than any other class because we don't tie all, type it into our calculator. We wait for somebody else to do it, and then nobody does it. So you should all be typing that in. X is equal to... Forty-four point eight. Did a few others get that? So we can all go with it. Okay. Forty-four point eight degrees. Now remember that sine inverse is always going to give us an acute angle because it can only sine inverse. Remember on our unit circle only gives us answers outputs up here and down here. Correct? Right. Outputs between positive ninety degrees and negative ninety degrees. Right. So, anyways, that makes sense though because there's only one obtuse angle ever. You can never have two obtuse angles. So x is forty-four point eight degrees. Everybody good? Okay, looking over here, we can use the law of sines because we're given two angles and then a side. Now, why can we use the law of sines? Because if we have two angles, then we can find the third angle very quickly. What's my third angle here? 180 minus 30 minus 100. 50 degrees. Now, from there, we can set up the law of sines. I'm trying to solve for x, so I like to put that on top. So it's x over sine of the angle across equals 30 over sine of the angle across. Now it's just algebra to get x alone. So x is equal to 30 sine, sine of 100. Now you shall be typing this in, times sine of 30. So x is equal to 18? 15. Okay, 15.2. Sweet. We got 15.2. Now understand your triangle should make sense. The largest side should be across from the long, largest angle, medium angle should be across from the medium side, and so on. So if something's off, then you can say something's not right here. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, cool. Okay, moving on. So recall the ambiguous case with the law of signs. We just went over it. What are the cases? We can either have one, two, or no solutions. And we just practiced that all in number five, right? So we're all good with that. Let's move on. Okay, so today we're doing the law of cosines. So you will use the law of cosines if you are given three sides and no angles. If you're given a side, 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 then we can go through and find missing angles using the law of cosines. Um, you'll also use the law of cosines because think about it, guys. If we don't have two angles, I mean, if we have no angles in here, we can't use the law of sines because then you have sine of the unknown over this over five, and then sign of a different unknown over, you get what I'm saying? So we'd have two unknowns. So you couldn't use the law of sines. So then you would use the law of cosines. Um, you'll also use the law of cosines if you're given the information in the order of side angle side. Well, here's why. If you tried to go about using the law of sines, you'd say sine of, for example, you'd say sine of 100 over x equals, and then you don't have another angle, sine of question mark, over 15. Now you have two unknowns. So do you see how now you say, okay, I must have to use the law of cosine. So a lot of times there's no memorization needed. If you go about trying to go through the law of sines and you can't do it, you'll refer to the law of cosines. Now I did put this highlighted because note, if we can use the law of sines, it's always easiest and quicker to use the law of sines if you can. So we don't want to use the law of cosines unless absolutely necessary. So here are the different formulas for the, they're the same formula, but at different, uh, different sides. 
Um, so I've never even memorized that. I look at the pattern that's happening and then I rewrite the formula that way. So I'm going to move this a little bit and this. Okay. So it's if you have a triangle, ABC, this would be side A across from angle A, side B across from angle B, and then side C across from angle C. So this is the law of cosines um, formula. These little a's and b's and c's are sides. So to find anything here, so if we're trying to find, for example, uh, side a, you would do a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2 times b times c cosine of angle a. So what I want you to notice on this is that side a is on the outside of the equation and then clear over here, cosine of angle a, they correspond, right, everybody? And notice, b squared corresponds with cosine of b. So the outer edges correspond. Are you seeing it? c squared corresponds to cosine of angle c. So how I like to write this formula is just to write it like this. If we, I'm going to call this, because really it works for anything, side 1 squared, then out here on the outside will be cosine of side, cosine of side 1, right? Just like up here, and it was... A squared, we have cosine of A. So do you see how when I said side 1 squared, I said cosine of side 1. Okay, so side 1 squared equals side 2 squared plus the other side 3 squared minus 2 times side 2 times side 3 cosine of side 1. So I just like notice the pattern. Look up here, guys. A squared equals, do you see how you have B squared, the other side squared plus the other side squared? Yeah. Then minus 2 times that times that. Look, times that times that. And then cosine of the angle that corresponds to that side you're trying to find. So I just go with the pattern because then I don't have to like, literally, I don't have to memorize it. Does that make sense, everybody? So do you see how it's a squared plus c squared and then minus 2 times a times c? Guys, so do you guys see what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to even write down the formula. I see the pattern, so I can just go. Are you guys seeing the pattern so that when I do? Okay. Yeah, so we can find missing angles and missing sides. So let's say we were going to find missing angle. You're still going to set this up correctly. So let's say you were finding, for example, let's say you're going to find angle C. Okay, that's a really good question. Let's say we were going to find angle C. Then this is going to be cosine of C. We need it to be right. So the one that's on the outside, the equal sign, would need to be this side squared so that they match up. C and cosine. Does that make sense? The outside match up. We're going to do some examples, and then maybe it will help a little bit. Okay, here's my first example. So it says find all the angles. I would write this example down. Okay, I'm going to kind of write small because we're going to. I'm going to show all my algebra. So your book goes through and gives all these different formulas. I literally only teach you the one formula because then you don't have to memorize anything. You just use algebra to solve. Okay, so it says find all the angles. So we're going to choose an angle to solve for first. Would you like to solve for, let's, I always, you should probably start always with the largest angle. So isn't this the largest side? Yeah. Let's find the largest angle first. So what I'm going to do is first find angle B. So I'm first finding angle B, so I'm going to show all my work. So in the law of cosines, we would need our B squared to be on the outside. Does that make sense, everybody? So that means we're going to have 19 squared is equal to the other side squared, 14 squared plus the other side squared, 8 squared minus 2, and then you just look right here, times 14 times 8. We're just noticing the pattern. Oops. Times 14 times 8 times by cosine of angle B. Okay, now look, we have one unknown. It's using algebra to get B alone. So what I'm going to have you do is be really careful. I'm going to show all my work for this. I already have it out. I did. Well, I looked back today because my alarm went off at 9.20. And I leave at 9.20. I mean, at 6.20. And I leave my house at 6.30. So I literally just like, was like, I just Okay. Nobody noticed, so I was like, wow, I just want to see both. Okay. Thank you. You're so nice. Yeah. You just say, oh, it looks so cute. But 
we're only kind of regretting it. Do you like it? All right. I thought no guys ever going to date me again. All right. Continuing. So, 19 squared. I'm going to show my work so I don't make errors. 361 equals that squared is 260 plus, nope. I'm just going to go ahead and do this all first. So, you'll go like this. That squared, 14 squared plus 8 squared. So, we're going to get 260, right? And I'm going to multiply that out. So, I have minus 2, 2, 4, cosine of B. Make sure you don't make the tragic mistake of what regular students do and go 260 minus 224. That's multiplication, that's subtraction. You can't combine those. Yeah, I did add those up because it's addition, so it's pretty cool. Okay, now solving for B using the correct order here. Shouldn't we subtract 260? Yeah. Okay, so we'll subtract 260. So on this side, we end up with 101 equals. Now that's gone. We have negative 224 cosine of angle B. Now we're solving for B. So what would my next step be? Good. Divide by negative 224. Divide by negative 224. And now we have cosine of B equals 101 divided by negative 224. Now when we take the cosine inverse. So B will be equal to cosine inverse of 101 divided by negative 224. So type that into your calculator, second cosine of that. Angle B is 116.8. Okay. Now let's just use lost signs. Way good idea, Dylan, because that's going to be quicker. Okay, let's go angle C, why not, right? Angle C. So we would say C over sine of, <clears throat> never mind. <laughs> okay, we would say, we would say sine of C is what I meant to say, that C made me mess up. Let's, okay. Sine of C over 14, right? Equals sine of 116.8 over 19. Now solve for angle C. So won't C, let's do it in our head, be sine inverse of 14 times that, right? Are you guys able to see it in your head that quick? Just wondering. Yeah? Okay, sweet. Hey, tell me what angle C is. I got angle C to be 41.12. Okay, cool. So now finding angle A is easy. 180. Minus angle C minus angle B. I got 22.08. Questions on that? Okay. Good. So the first angle we found using the law of cosines, and then we opted for the easier option of law of sides. Okay, find side A. So notice, why am I using the law of cosines? Because I'm given... Two sides and an angle. And if I went to set up the law of sines, look what would happen. I'd say sine of 115 over we don't know equals, and then we're going to be dealing with sine of we don't know over 10. Like we have two unknowns. Does everybody see why? Then I go, okay, law of cosines. All right, here we go. So we're finding side A. So I'm going to go and put an A here. So that needs to be on the outside, guys. What you're trying to find is on the outskirts of town. Okay, so side A. So we're going to have A squared equals the other side squared. 15 squared plus the other side squared. Minus 2 times that times that. I was really proud of myself. I didn't even have to look at the formula this year to remember it, just because I remember the pattern. And then cosine of angle B, A, which is? 115, right? Now look, where's my unknown? Over here. So all I have to do is calculate that side and then take the square root in a second. So what you're going to do is type that in. So when you type that in, you should all type it in. Ready, go. You should get 451.79. You should all type that in right now. I'll give you a second. And now, this is a squared though, so to solve for a, we would take the square root of both sides of the equation. Ding, 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 ding. 
So we get A is equal to 21.26 degrees. Not degrees. 21.26. Okay, we found side A. Now we can finish finding angles and stuff using the law of sine. But we don't need to, it says find sine A. Find sine A, okay? Sweet. Okay. A picture. Okay, there's a fun fact in here, and I went through and did your homework myself. And what I saw was that they didn't give you quite as much information as they gave in the example. So I'm going to explain something that so that when you did your homework, you can do it. So it says, this is the this is all it reads, okay? And they give you a picture, so they tell you a little bit too much information versus you having to draw it. So I'll explain. So it says, the pitcher's mound on a woman's softball field is 43 feet from the home plate. So 43 feet, here's the picture from the home plate. Does that part make sense? Okay. The distance between the bases is 60 feet. So from here to here, 60. Here to here, 60. 60, 60. Everybody good. Now it says, how far is the pitcher's mound from the base? So pitcher's mound from base 1. I think it's from the base 1. Yeah, it is base 1. So they put X there for you, and they drew this picture. Notice in the instructions it said nothing about that 45 degree angle, right? That, so we are going to be able to assume that. Now here's why. So notice from the pitcher's mound, we're going to drop down a perpendicular line to this 90. This is going to be a 90 degree angle right here. If we drop a line perpendicular, it cuts the 90 degrees into 45. So they're drawing the picture for you, and they give you that that's 45. So if they didn't tell you that, you could just assume that. Does that make sense, everybody? That angle is 45 degrees. This is a 90 degree angle right here. So do you see how I cut it in half? So we know from here to here on our triangle is 45. So if I do this, what's this angle? 45, okay? Does that help a little bit? Right here. Right here. Sorry, my bad. It's kind of hard for me to draw a perfect picture. If you want a better picture, you could look in your book. I freehanded this in five seconds. Does that make sense, everybody? This is 90 degrees, like, because it's a square. Think about it, it's a square. There we go. If we drop this down on the corner of a square, wouldn't that be cutting the square's corner into a half, which is 45 and 45. Does that explain it better? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's going to be 90 right there. Good point. Good point. Okay, so it says... How far is the pitcher's mound? So looking at this here, oh, is it going to be? Yeah, it is. It's fine. Here's the pitcher. He's standing on the mound. So now let's use the law of cosines. Here we go. So look, we're given two sides. What? True. True. Here's the thing, though. Look at your book. Everybody open your book. I might have just found this picture off. Here's what we're running into. Because like I said, I pre-handed it. This picture's mound is not equally split here. So it is, that's the thing. We can only assume this is 45 and this is 45. But we can't assume because this is actually different distance from here to here. Does that make sense? Otherwise, we could just say if this is 43, this is 43. Do you get what I'm saying? Uh, here we go. All right, so we can't assume that this is 45 over here degrees, only the one from the pitcher's mound to the home plate. All right, I don't know. Okay, so look at my picture, though. Now we can set up the law of cosine. So this is my side I'm missing, right? So x squared equals, right, 43 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 43 times 60. Now, why did I choose to put that on the outside? Because that's what we're solving for. And then cosine of the angle across from it. So cosine of... Okay. So this is another problem where we're just typing that into our calculator. Okay. So type that in. And you get... 1,800.3 feet... And then we would need to square root both sides of the equation. So x is equal to 42.43. So this distance, 42.43,
This distance from the pitcher to first base is not the exact same as from the pitcher to the home plate. It's actually a little bit further away. And I think I said it backwards. I don't know, I don't know anything about baseball. But now I know because my Okay. All good? Are you confused? Okay. So I need you to repeat with me. Here we go. So it says the trip traveled. A trip. See, I'm already messing up. A ship travels 60 miles due east. So here's the ship starting at point A. They start east. Now look, I always like to have this drawn. North, south, east, west. Never eat soggy waffles. Here we go. So here's my ship starting point. They start going 60 miles due east, and then they adjust, adjust, but it most is supposed to say adjust. Adjust its course northeastward as shown below. So do you see how now they're going northeastward, which you go northeast. So do you see how that would be putting from here to here? Northeast, because remember that's how bearings work. So then point B, they shift and go this way. A bearing is like the degree measure. Like this would be like whatever degree that is, that's a bearing. So now they're shifting and going 80 miles so they hit point C, and then it says the ship's total distance from its point of departure, which is here, to the ending dis the ending point is 139 miles. It says describe the bearing from point B to point C. So what you're going to do is go down to point B, and we're going to draw in an X, Y thing here. So we're trying to find out bearings work like this. You don't go off of this. You go off of the north or the south, right? So we're trying to find this angle right here. Does everybody see? Yeah? Okay, so before we can find that angle, we need to look in this triangle and figure out this big angle. Because once we know that big angle, we can then work backwards. Does everybody see what I'm saying? Yep, so let's, this is our big angle, so we're finding B. Cosine of B is gonna be on our outside, so side B needs to be on our outside, everybody? One. 39 squared equals 60 squared plus 80 squared minus 2 times that times that. Cosine of whatever. Let's call it cosine of B. <laughs> it is cosine of B. All right. Everybody, do some algebra. So I like to do out my work on this one. Maybe you should too. 1, 9, 3, 2, 1 equals... I combined those two and got 10,000, and then I multiplied those together, so I have minus 9600 cosine of angle B. Now solving for B using algebra, so I took that minus that, right? 9321 equals negative 9600 cosine of B. So to getting B alone, you would divide, so you have 9321 divided by Negative nine six zero zero. Okay, equals cosine of B. So then, when we take the cosine inverse of that, angle B equals cosine inverse of nine three two one divided by negative nine six zero zero. Go go go. Okay, so this one sixty six point two. Is everybody comfortable? Now let's think about this. How could we go about tackling this? Here's my x, y chart to figure out this angle. Wouldn't this entire thing be 180, guys? So 180 minus 166, 180 minus 166.2 would give me this angle. What's that angle? 13.8. Very good. Now to find that angle, you'll take 90 minus 13.8, and we get 76, so that is 76.2 degrees. So you would say north, 76.2 degrees in which direction? East. Pretty good, yeah? Pretty good, yes. Yeah, there's yeah, that's true. I like I said, everybody's brains work differently. That's how I saw it. But yes, we could have. That would have been just quicker, right? 
that minus 90 because then that would have gave us that. Yeah, I like that. Very good point. All right, so this is the last thing. Here we go. Problem 24 out of the book, if you're interested. We're on the law of cosines. So, we're going to I'm not going to Okay, yeah, they were. Okay. So, here's the thing, guys. Your book teaches you a new formula. I'm going to give it to you, but holy cow. Who wants to have all these things memorized? Don't we already know how to find area of any triangle that's not right? We learned it last time. Area is equal to one half times side one times side two times by side of the angle in between, right? Okay, so why learn a new formula in my opinion? So let's do it this way and then I'll show you the other way that they give you the formula. So here we go, let's draw in our triangle. It's all about drawing it incorrectly. It does matter drawing it incorrectly. Here we go. So what I do is draw a triangle. I label it ABC before I go put in my information. Because if I put in my information incorrectly, I'm going to get it wrong. So side A is 12. So i got to put it across from angle A. Side C is 9 and side B is 15. What we're going to do is to find this area, we need an angle, don't we? Okay, so let's go through and find the largest angle. How about angle B? Because that's the largest, right? So let's use the law of cosines to find that angle. So we would say 15 squared equals 9 squared minus 12 squared minus 2. Yep, minus 2 times 9 times 12 times cosine of angle B. Go, algebra, get solve for B. You already did it? Oh, okay. Okay, so... Okay, so we have... I did the algebra, yeah, but let's just skip a little ahead here. So once you subtract those over this way, right? You know what I'm saying? You get zero is equal to, and then if you will, so then we have negative two times nine times 12 cosine of B. Just trust me, 15 squared, we should all do that actually, so that you believe me, because you shouldn't just trust me. Let's all type in 15 squared equals, what's that squared? All they're the same, so when I subtracted it, it became zero, but I shouldn't have skipped that because that does throw people off. Okay, let's just show the work. Are you sure? Okay, hey, so now from here, will we divide by negative 2 times 9 times 12? Negative 2 times 9 times, I'm just making a point here. Isn't 0 divided by anything 0? So we have 0 is equal to cosine of B. No, it's not. Okay, now when we take the inverse of both sides, B is equal to cosine inverse of zero, which is 90 degrees. So we go up, we go up and put in 90 degrees. Now we can find the area, but don't we need, hey, are you paying attention over there? You're not, so I need you to. Okay, so looking up here, sir, do you see how to find the area? We're gonna have to use those two sides since the angle right there is between those two sides. One half times nine times twelve times sine of ninety. Go type it into your calculator. Fifty four. Area is fifty four. Okay, so to me it's like we know the one formula. It works. It always works. You know what I mean? Why learn another formula? But if you're interested, are you interested in getting Heron's formula? Okay, awesome. If you're not, if you're not interested, then yeah, just watch because it is. I guess just watch it. So I'll say that again for the video. This is the formula used to find the area of any triangle if you know all the sides. You don't need angles. So pretty cool. So area is equal to if you have all the sides. S times S minus A times S minus side B times S minus C. And S 
is equal to a plus b plus c divided by 2. Okay, so let's figure out s. So do you see how we have three sides, no angles? You could use this formula or you could just do it the good old fashioned way like we just did it. Here we go. So let's find s first. So a plus b plus c, 12 plus 15 plus 9, all divided by 2. So if you get s, you get 18. So now let's plug it into our formula up here. Area is equal to the square root of s, which is 18, times 18 minus side 1, so 18 minus 12, times 18 minus 15, times 18 minus 9. And now all I have to do is calculate that. So our area is um, underneath, just so that you can make sure you have it right. We already know the area is going to come out the same, because we already found the area. But it does come out to be 54. So it all depends. If you want to remember both formulas for area, that's great. If you just like the other one, and you want to be able to just quickly find an angle, you know what I mean? And that's great too. I just think it's so much, uh, the less formulas I have to remember for ACTs and stuff, the better. Okay. And this happens to be a little bit faster. Like I said, it's all in what do you want to remember for the test. Do you want to have two formulas memorized or not? What? S is this. And we just don't have time to go in and prove to you where this comes from and stuff. If you're interested, you can go look into it into your book, and I can help you figure that out. Okay? All right. So I have Okay. Uh, remember the other formula was just the area is equal to one half times side one times side two times by sine of the angle in between. So that's just the one I always use. I didn't even know this formula because I just always, I ha knew this formula and it always works. You know what I mean? So I'm like, why memorize extra stuff? That's my opinion. Okay, these are the problems. There you go. Oh, the formula's written right there, too. So 1 through 9 odds, 23, 31, 33, 39, 41, 47, 49, 59, 62.